I hope I don't cut anyone off. I already know I'm going to. Just like it's just the way I talk, and it's just like, yeah. It's just I don't. I, I personally don't. Obviously, yeah, like it's for the camera purposes, but yeah. I don't mind if people do that. That's just like a general conversation. I know, but I just I do too much. <laughs> What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the fourth podcast on the Dope Shorts channel here today. My name is Dominic Grandoni. My name is Peter Dubuslo, and today we have a special guest with us, and he will introduce himself. What's going on, guys? My name is Kevin Calamari, and uh, just appreciate these guys having me out today. Hey, no worries. We, uh, you know what? The more guests we have, the better, honestly. Like for us, it makes our our lives way easier for it. The second honest. last podcast we did, I think it was really good with Pete. Yeah, yeah. And then the one that we did last week was a little different style. Um, but we decided to bring on Kevin because he's a content creator as well. Um, so Kevin, why don't you go ahead and um, kind of explain what you do and how you got into shooting photos and video. Yeah, so um, honestly, it was, I started off in university. Uh, I wanted to be a doctor. You know, oh wow, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's, a that's a, like a crazy like U-turn right yeah. there. Oh yeah, for sure. It was um, European parents, you know, telling you, Oh, yeah. like, you're smart, go be a doctor, whatever, yeah. right? So, went to Brock for two years. Uh, first year was amazing, did well. Second year, terrible. <laughs> um, oh, grades went down the shitter. Um, Is it because you were probably thinking of something else? You weren't fully into yeah, it? Yes, so that's when I kind of started into the fitness game. So, okay. I was uh, definitely in the fitness game a little bit, um, doing like online training, kind of all that kind of stuff. I was in the gym more than I was in class. Damn. So, then uh, I started to, um, yeah, just skip a lot of classes, and I knew. Like probably after first semester, I wasn't gonna go back. So then um, it was sec second year was done, and it was the summer, and I actually was uh, working at a local gym in Hamilton, HFA. HFA. Peter, no, Peter knows HFA. Jay's, Jay's place. Yeah, Jay's place. Jay's, yeah. So, I think that's uh, how I kind of yeah, met you for the met. first time yeah. at the the grand opening. I think it was. Yes, they had that big party, and then uh, you came there and you were shooting video for it. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah. was when I first met you for the first time. And we were, and it's funny because we both like clicked because we both used Sony. Yes, exactly. And it's just like a, another Sony shooter. It's just like, hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah, I know. We're yeah. automatic friends. And you switch. You were you switch. I was one right? DX first. Yes, Canon, exactly. and then I went to Sony. And that's why I asked you because I was, I was wondering that. But uh, yeah, so I started doing the fitness stuff, and then um, I kind of planned to just do fitness stuff. That was my idea, and then I started getting into some different YouTubers uh, like. Rob Lipset, Christian Guzman, like a big, bigger influencers, and a lot of them. Christian Guzman? Yes, the oh, guy. Alpha League guy. He does like the Alpha League fitness clothing. Yeah, he's, oh. the, he's like the he's opened that Alpha World now. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I focus a lot about on the video stuff, and then okay. I start picking up a camera, I start vlogging my fitness stuff, yeah. and then I started doing some uh, video stuff for Jay at HFA. Jay, yeah, yeah. And then once I started doing some of that content stuff, some of the content marketing, um, Jay actually said, like, hey, why don't we just get you to do this full time? I remember him. Instead, yeah. instead of the personal training. Yeah. And I was like, all right, like, let's do it. So I started doing that. And then I think it was two weeks in, I had like six clients. Really? And it was like strictly all fitness stuff. A lot, a lot of, because Jay's got a huge network. Shout, yeah, yeah. Out, to, shout out to Jay at HFA. But, um, he actually came here. Um, he came here a few times, actually. He, he upgraded his wheels. Yeah. And then he bought a bike. For his girlfriend, oh, sure. or she bought a bike. Awesome. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, so that's how it all kicked off, and then I started um, doing the fit, the more fitness uh, content, um, and then I kind of started to switch into the more sports stuff because um, before university I was playing soccer and uh, had a few offers, D1 to like University of Massachusetts, University of Florida. So um, I wanted to play soccer, but then my parents kind of sat with me like, oh, you got to get a job, be realistic, yeah. be realistic kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I went to university. So, so what's, your, what's your background? Um, like por Portuguese, like oh, nationality-wise? So yeah. Yeah, I'm Portuguese. Portuguese? Okay. Yeah. So I'm Portuguese, um, and that's why soccer is such a big part yeah, of my life. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, for sure. That's why I wanted to get into more soccer content creation. So um, I did some stuff with... Um, and a sports network or a sports marketing company um, first touch football and that's when I kind of all started kicking off the sports niche stuff for nice. me and how did you get how did you get into this the soccer stuff so it was actually it was a funny story it was actually one of my buddies couldn't go to this shoot and he's like hey like are you, you still you stole his job 
he asked me that for him. He, he asked me, okay? He asked me. I did not steal anything. Um, <laughs> we'll keep that straight. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so he asked me to fill in for him. And um, I, it was in Syracuse, so we had to drive to, to New York. So we oh, had to wow. take, drive four hours with a random guy I didn't know. Yeah. So I wound up getting in the car, driving with this guy, super cool time. And actually one of my buddies from high school played there, um, Ryan Raposo, who, who actually plays in the MLS now. So oh, he, was, wow. he was playing on that team. And then after that, doing that video for them, they were like astounded. Yeah. And at that point, the sports marketing company was at about like 800 followers. So they were still fairly small. And now, Currently, they're at what twenty five thousand. Oh, good. Uh, awesome. Yeah, so it's been like a huge jump since then. That was what believe, November twenty eighteen. So about wow. a year and a half ish. So um, did you did you um, do stuff for Forge? Um, no, I did not do anything for Forge. There was a uh, there was some stuff going on with them. We were supposed to be this year actually. We were supposed to have a contract with them to do some video stuff, but then that kind of fell through with yeah, um, COVID, with yeah. what's going on right now. But uh, but yeah, it's it's been great ever since. Now That's just good. trying to get cool. more into the sports stuff yeah. specifically, and yeah. You trying to just aim it towards just soccer? I don't think it's generally just soccer. I think it's definitely all sports because I've done some football stuff with local high school yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Just the, a lot of that stuff is kind of passion projects, just because I'm a huge football fan. Yeah. I, um, like soccer, I like basketball, I like all that kind of stuff. Um, running as well, so running is definitely a big thing for me too. But um, definitely kind of just more sports in general. Like I, I again love football, soccer, pretty much anything throw it at me. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it. It's uh, like personally, I know you do a lot of weddings. Yeah. Uh, I've done weddings in the past. Like, They're cool, but I just couldn't couldn't click with it. No. I don't know. I just couldn't find it. Um, yeah. It just wasn't for me, and I'm like, I don't want to. These are like some of the biggest memories these people have, right? The yes. Like, yeah, yeah. Have, yeah, producing yeah. wedding films like that is insane, and like coming from me i'm like if i'm not passionate about it i don't want to exactly do this for them and it's because you played soccer bass or football yeah you know like you have the passion for it and exactly. you know yeah yeah so it's definitely one of those things where like i knew for like 100 percent like i could do this like for the rest of my life like, yeah. sports in general and mm -hmm. i'll be golden so that's what we've been trying to do and i think this is the year to do um passion projects definitely this is the year. Yeah, we spoke about that a few episodes yeah. ago. Yeah. Like, because now you got the time. Like, yeah. It it depends too, because if you have a passion project where you're limited to like using people, you're yeah. screwed. Because mm -hmm. then you know what I mean. Like, you have to if you're shooting somebody, you can shoot yourself, but then you're on you're limited to stationary shots, or you have to set up a slide, an automatic slider, and all that stuff. Yeah. But uh, not a, not every time like a project will go like the way you want it, and yeah. when it does, it's like perfect. Yeah. You know. It's kind of hard to have this image and just go with it and it all falls through perfect. Half the time it doesn't, but I mean, I guess in the end, that's what it's all about. You know, if it was meant to be or not. Yeah, I don't I don't think it ever goes perfect. No, 100%. Yeah, I, I, it's kind of weird. It's, it's so kind of stupid, but we, yeah. we really chase that. Yeah, every, yeah, yeah. Single yeah, time, yeah. Every single time we go out and shoot, it's always like, not perfect. Yeah. We'll have yeah. the shot. You think of a shot, and then and then you're about to shoot it, and then it's just like, this is not what I saw yeah. in my head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like it never comes out that way, and it's like it's funny that we know this. We know it'll never be perfect, but yeah. we still chase that. Yeah. It, it's definitely kind of funky to think about, but it, it's honestly so good. That's why I love. I love the chase. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, sure. It's like even though like it's it, it's perfectly planned, and it'll maybe not go to plan. And then once you edit it and stuff, you'll notice, you'll see, it'll be like, wow, that came out better than I thought. Yeah. It's the um, the rush. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the and that's one of the reasons why I like shooting weddings. Yeah. And especially doing same day edits. I feel that. Yeah. He's gonna know what you're getting like, into too. I like yeah. that. Yeah. No, I, I, I definitely feel that. But um, but yeah, I definitely like the the whole short film stuff. Yeah. I like the um, especially for sports. I think it's a big thing now, and mm -hmm. if you, you see it a lot in marketing. Even with, um, I actually just posted something on my story is about Tom Brady. He Under Armour got him to market this T-shirt. Oh wow! And it's like they made it like a. It was still only a minute, but they treated it kind of like a short film kind of thing. Yeah. Like showing him like as a father um, and like like a man outside of football, and then like it was really cool to see like how they put different aspects of short films into mm -hmm. like just a yeah. short video, and yet use it as like a like their master marketing piece for yes. like this is it just event. a t-shirt yeah so because that's a big thing with Under Armour Under Armour actually started just from a t-shirt and that's what a lot of people don't know and they started off back way back like with when it was only Nike and Adidas that's it oh. and they were like a huge underdog and that's what he talks about he's like yeah. I was drafted 199th in the draft um, 
and I was an underdog before, and now look at me now. And they actually called it the greatest tea of all time. Come on. Yeah. So it's funny, right? Yeah. It's like greatest Tom Brady of all time, greatest tea. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, it works. It works <laughs> amazingly. So like seeing stuff like that is definitely stuff I'm going to be doing in the in the future, even now. So um, that's what I like. I think that's a smart move under under Armour because they're not only opening up to people who are love Tom Brady, but like father figures now. Exactly. And so when they when they make that short, you're actually like. That's things we don't even like. Things that people don't even understand too is like when you're when you're advertising like a short film or say like a clip like that, you're opening up. You're you're sort of showing everyone the types of audiences you want. So father figure, football player. I don't. I would. I didn't. I didn't see the video, but what else did they show in there? Like, um, it was kind of just him being an underdog in general. It was so like they hit on so many different cues yeah, yeah. from a marketing standpoint, and that's what I love. I also love like when I th talk about filmmaking and the creativity part I love that but I also love the marketing standpoint yeah. from it like being able to literally think about the psychology of someone looking at that it's like like yeah of course Tom Brady could probably sell anything like it doesn't it's matter what he sells <laughs> but the way they used him was definitely to its, its fullest potential and I think that that's the best part about it did but, this um, video just come out? yeah oh yeah? yeah it literally just came out what, three days ago? okay but yeah it, it, super awesome um but yeah, he's actually coming out with a documentary about himself. Oh, nice. Yes. I like Because he, he produced, he just actually started a production company. Um, and it was, it's called the 199 Studio or whatever. Yeah. And it's actually, um, uh, it's like meant to focus on um, bigger projects because because again he was drafted 199th and he if you don't know I'm a I'm a football fan and he went to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers mm -hmm. and uh, he actually started the production company in Florida oh. so now he's he's doing big productions in Florida and they actually released a trailer about a couple months ago uh, about a documentary about him and it's super is it like cool. a Netflix documentary or just like a um, YouTube I think it's thing? definitely going to be I think it's going to be a YouTube thing but I think that's that's his idea is kind of getting yeah. into the Netflix thing because especially with The Last Dance the Michael Jordan documentary on, on Netflix yeah. I think that's definitely what he's kind of going for but um, I mean the way they're yeah. the way they're making documentaries nowadays are just like insane like I, 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 I think Netflix ha is creating one of the best documentaries out there 100% have you ever watched the uh, Mafia one the, the um, what they're called? Uh, the it just came out, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, Fear City or something. Fear City. Is that what it is? No, I haven't yeah. seen it. Oh, you gotta watch it. It's good. It's it's, it's honestly, it's um, and Andre said it's just like a normal mafia documentary, but it's totally not. I don't know how. Like you throw. <laughs> Man, they <laughs> interviewed. They interviewed people. They actually interviewed the people that would go inside the mob's house and bugged their phone. They interviewed the guy that did it, and they told they they show you and tell you how they did it. So they were hearing every conversation that they did. That's insane. I'm surprised they even advertised that they actually did that. Yes. Because now, like that, that yeah, method's probably all, used. Like yeah, it's all and, old old money. And 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 the guy that that did the whole bugging on the phone would send him um, cards in the mail to to screw up his head. So what would he do? He would send him cards with cats and dogs just to just to screw up his mind. Really? Yeah, oh man, you haven't seen it? No, I haven't. Oh seen it. man, you have to watch it. Uh, it's the same and guys who did the cat. Yeah, uh, the yeah. Cat documentary. Yeah, don't fuck with cats. Oh, oh, that was, that was yeah. that was a good one. That yeah. was a good one. Yeah. The yeah, mom actually crazy. said that she wants to get him out or something because of COVID. Oh, I seen that. Yeah, for the the guy. Uh, what's his name? Luca Magnano. Yeah. Yeah. I seen that. From Toronto, man. I know that's crazy. Yeah, it was a topical. Yeah, so crazy. We actually tried to Google Map it. We tried to Google Map where he lived. Really? Yeah, we found it. It's on like a corner, and then there's an SO gas station right across. It's insane. But anyways, back to the Mafia documentary. The way they filmed it, totally different. Like, it's so cool the way they did it. Like, they would have a person inside like a coffee lounge, and then they would film outside, shooting through the glass and having the reflection. It's totally insane. Wow. It's like, it's mind-blowing, and it's just like, this is like good stuff for people who want to shoot documentaries or, or shoot stuff in general to it just shows you how creative you can get you know what i mean it's just insane when you guys have time i would highly suggest it did they fear, put, fear city fear city, fear city. Fear city. Yeah. did they put an nd filter to get the glare off the glass they must have done something <laughs> how do you get that that's glare what i'm off saying like, if i try to do that oh the, the polarized filter the, the polarized yeah. but yeah it's insane and just the fact that they Man, like they would go to a random parking lot and just get the guy who did the bugging and just talk to him in the car. But you think it's just a guy talking in the car? It's not. It, this is the way they they showed it. It's it's awesome. I have to watch it. Yeah. But that that's the thing though. Like we when we just watch a documentary, people are like, oh, like 
that guy's messed up. You know, yeah, that yeah. guy did that. That guy did that. But like, we're looking at it as like a different standpoint. Yeah, yeah. We, like, we wow, don't look at that angle. Like, yeah, how did that exactly. Come from? Exactly. How we don't look, look at it. At, yeah, we look at it totally different. Yeah, and that that's even my girlfriend knows. Yeah, she's like, she's like, I didn't notice that. Like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> like. Just watch, just watch the documentary. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Or like, I'll, I'll rewind. Yeah. It'll be like a scene like, oh, I love how they shot that. Yeah. I'm going to record that. It's like, what Sometimes I take photos of it for reference. <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, this one documentary that's on Netflix. It's, um, what's it called? It's something town. It's about a big party that happened back in the day. Not the one uh, where the guy scammed all the people. No, no, no. It was like a big party documentary of all these popular bands that came to play on stage. I don't know. I haven't even heard of that one. Something... Cape Town, Cope Town. I don't know. What's it about, though? Should we call Jessica? Right now? And ask Online? her. Online? I don't know. She's probably she's waiting making, for you to come. No, she's making, <laughs> she's making a tea. Oh, she's making a tea. Um, anyways, so the way they made this documentary, it has like that... It's like almost on like, you know, like the timelines right here where they have old cameras and then high-end HD cameras. It's like in the middle of that where they kind of like used good cameras but old cameras but like the quality is still there and i don't know what the production team did but they made it look so much better because this doc this whole thing was filmed in like 1970s i think yeah, yeah. but the quality is sick they probably <laughs> did put some software on it and brought it i don't know yeah. but it's got like that nice vintage look to it which nowadays people are trying to mimic. Yeah, oh, exactly. With our camera. Yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> but anyways, I don't know. It was just, it's just crazy like the the technology, how far it's come now, where what, what we can do with. Yeah. And, and the thing is, I was looking on IM, IMDB. Or what's it yeah, it? IMDB. And I was looking up because you can go and find movies on there and find out what cameras they use. Oh, I don't know they can do cameras. I didn't yeah. know that. I didn't even know. They, I they tell you the equipment that they use. Oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always check there for like actors. They're saying stuff like that. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I swear this chase from yeah. a movie. Yeah, like this person's in this movie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, didn't I know think I spent cameras. like 10, 15 minutes trying to find the cameras that they use. And Jessica's like, who cares? Just watch. I'm like, no, because I'm going to check eBay and see if they got one for sale. <laughs> and I'm going to buy it. <laughs> Which is funny because I was on eBay and I was telling Andre the Sony Venice camera, 80 grand. That's crazy. Yeah. That's probably the most expensive. It's one of their high, it's Sony's high end cameras that they have. What's yeah. the most expensive camera that anyone has? What's, Pro what's Red's? No, I don't think it's Red. It's maybe like the Aerie. The Aerie? Because oh, I know Red had the one that was um, the, one that the Michael Bay one. They had the Michael oh, Bay. Oh, the Bayham. His, yeah. That's that like one. 80 grand. That was 80 grand, yeah. Yeah. That's but I know, I, I know the Aerie Alexa LF, which is large format, I'm pretty sure that's a more expensive mm -hmm. one. Probably, uh, That's one that Robert Deakins uses. He used that, I'm pretty sure, on that war movie, 1915. No. 1917. Yeah, 1917. Yeah, they, yeah. Where they made it look like all one take. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, that was it awesome. wasn't even one take though. Oh, was it? I no, haven't watched. They it. show you how where they cut it. I don't even. I gotta start watching. And then movies. they kind of stitch it together. Nice. Yeah. What do you how, what do you think about like music videos like seeing now? So I don't, you've obviously seen Drake's new video. Yes. Yes. So what do you think Wait, about which, that now? It's like which sports. One? So, uh, laugh now, cry later. Yeah, laugh now, cry later. So now they're it's all the Nike complex. So now it's all sports oriented with like a music video. Now. Yes. So oh, what are your really? takes on that? I think that was just first of all, Drake is probably one of the smartest musical artists out there. Like that was just impeccable. Yeah. Um, and it just like the whole funny factor with it. Like yeah, he's, first of all, he's just like showing off at the Nike complex. Of course. I gotta watch this now. Oh, it, it, it's yeah. so. Wait, funny. The, the beginning does he show up in his car? Yes. Two car yeah, there's at night. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I think I might have seen this one. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I saw the full thing though. You've definitely seen clips on Instagram. Like yeah. right now, everyone's chopping it up, especially yeah. to the part where um, where Drake's crying. Oh, and where there yeah. comes in. Yeah. Dude, what are you doing? It's like, oh, it's. Been, I forget what he says exactly. He's like, so oh, it's, it's been a tough ride. Yeah, yeah. I just gotta have my warrior spirit right now. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> I, love, I love that when it I'm comes good, to good. that. Yeah, I know. It was so funny. Like, he he definitely hit that on the nail. Like I think that was like beautifully done it was so clean yeah, yeah. i love how they brought in like they did like night vision clips as well in there. really yeah because they were him and uh little Durkey were like on the go-karts or whatever okay. or golf, cart, golf, golf carts, carts yeah, sorry. Yeah. and they were um and they had the night vision and it was oh, wow. super cool and then they did the underwater shot with uh, yeah, but he's got the biggest budget you can oh, get he can oh, get yeah, whatever yeah, he yeah. wants oh my god I he mean, can be like oh, it's yeah, not like fair yeah. oh yeah it, it's yeah. ridiculous I, I can't i can't even imagine how much that costs yeah like they have the one shot from it's like the, from the creed movie where he's underwater punching oh and then yeah. drake does it and he's like baby yeah <laughs> right. i gotta watch it <laughs> and they That's actually so actually they mounted they had did you see the the clips the the behind the scenes clips no i, I didn't see them. so it's, it's him on the studio and they had mounted like i don't know it was it was some like cinema camera but they had this like huge rig on the studio where the camera's pointing to get the one yeah. shot so I'm like, yeah, that's scary. Cause, and they had like this 
this covered. Yeah, but they got insurance. They do, but like, even if, imagine it being like an eighty thousand dollar camera and it goes underwater just because he fl- obviously he's not gonna ride it to the point where it's gonna get crazy. But like, imagine like a boat. Yeah, Drake will just show up later with cash here, buy yourself. A yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. He's driving it too. He wouldn't care. But oh like, yeah. But that cool. that was a crazy shot. I can't believe how they did that. It was really so like. St- so like steady yeah, so yeah. steady and he's just ripping the CD like looking back at Drake on there it's like <sighs> I gotta watch it oh, you hey, make hey, me wanna watch it it's insane we gotta it's do insane. that stuff with GoPros while well, this guy's got like <laughs> yeah, probably we'll, a, a we'll, red we'll, or an Ari in front of him we'll use a GoPro <laughs> yeah. or, or we'll start off with our phones yeah. <laughs> we'll like create some like duct tape it to the handle yeah like, like do something these guys got like this whole like suction mechanical thing on the, the front of the CD oh, so it's insane it's yeah. insane so, so going back to like the sports creating stuff so like Obviously, like, do you turn down jobs? Like, if someone asks you to shoot a music video, like, would you do it? Um, I think I would. Um, because that it goes back to I love telling stories. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's I think it's definitely situational. Mm-hmm. So if someone's coming to me and I really believe in the idea, of course I will 100 yeah. percent do it. Um, it's just more of a sense of me marketing it, right? Yeah. Like maybe I won't market it that well. I could keep kind of low key, but like, and st- still enjoy the creative process and go yeah. through it entirely, like how I would any other job. But it's uh, just probably wouldn't market it as much. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's something I, I actually have never shot a music video. No. I know, I know you've done a few. Yeah. Uh, you've done some with what Nick Dematic I've seen. Nick, yeah. do you yeah. know Nick? Uh, I know of him from high school. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. You went to STM then? Yes. Okay, so I, I did uh, Sandra Sorgini's. Yes, that was my gym teacher. Yeah, so she, I, I did her video for her fitness I know. stuff. Yeah, yeah. I know. I saw. At that's HFA. how I saw you. Yeah, yeah. At, at HFA. At HFA, yeah, because uh, I met Jay through through Pete actually. I yeah, because you came to help me doing that one shoot. With uh, you did video. Lindsay was it Lindsay? Lindsay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I did the behind the scenes and I met Jay there and I said, Hey Jay, you mind uh, like? Yeah. If we use those spaces like yeah. No yeah, Jay's cool for with that stuff. Yeah, he definitely is. Yeah, he, that, that's sure will help you. Out. Yeah, that's how we all people on that. Yeah, because I know I remember saw she started a whole fitness thing and I saw that I'm like oh, yeah. yeah, there's Dom again. Yeah, she's uh she's awesome. She um so like I, I she was my gym teacher too believe yeah. it or not um and then like 15 years later we we're like she told me I was at a wedding so uh it was I, I was at my buddy's wedding. Do you know Brian Drzewski by chance? No, so I was at his wedding and then she was there because uh, her husband and him are really close and I, I was drinking all night and then like she she was asking me some stuff and I was a little bit buzz, like buzzing and so I'm <laughs> on the dance floor in the corner of the dance floor talking to her about like what to do like social media wise and I was like if you want help like I was there talking for an hour and a half I didn't even dance for the, the remainder of the night because I was talking to her the whole night so then she contacted me like three weeks later she goes hey I want to start doing something so we ended up doing that clip and then I did the workout videos for her too so. that's awesome that's good stuff man. yeah yeah it's fun man good <laughs> yes, times sir. It's crazy how like job or like helping people can lead to other jobs. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, it's definitely insane. It's um, that's the whole thing with like you said, like turning down jobs. It's like I don't think I would just because you never ever know yeah. what that one job could, could lead, lead to. to. Yeah. yeah, you never know. Like that one job that, hey, maybe you hate doing that, but you doing that like of course yeah you're getting that financial return from it of course which obviously we need with yeah. all of our equipment and everything that a lot of people don't understand but um we get that financial return but we also get the chance that you know you make that connection with that person but who knows who they know exactly right exactly. and that's how a lot of the, the things i've a lot of my opportunities i don't know about your guys but um that's how they've come about was because people um are doing jobs that maybe i didn't really like but hey the, those people had contacts with people that would provide me the jobs that I did like, yeah. and yeah. that's how it, it's turned out now. And yeah, you see, like, I, I, so I'm doing real. I did real estate uh, yesterday for with, um, a buddy of mine's wife. Yeah. And they have a guy in Hamilton that does like he owns a lot of properties and stuff, and he's actually involved in a lot of indie films. He funds a lot of indie films, which oh, I found wow. out. So I'm hoping to get that connect with this guy. That's awesome. Uh, but they like he said, uh, I gotta make it for his property in there. So he goes, yo, we'll make it look good because this guy is into that. That stuff, and he took architect. He's, he took a lot of architectural. I took architectural. It's my full time job. I do. Uh, oh really? Yeah, I work for City of Brantford for full time, so I do that stuff. So this guy's literally like in the same field as I'm in. So I'm like, that's that's cool. And he's in. This guy's into fashion. He does like fashion shows and stuff. So it's actually yeah, it's pretty cool. So yeah. I'm like hoping to get that connect. But I know what you mean. Like, it just takes that one video to frame someone else to see your stuff and say, hey, I want to hire you, hire you for something. Yeah, exactly. Like, you just never know, and it could be stuff that you do like, and just. It gives you continuous work doing that same stuff all the time, but um, and for sure give it your all. Oh, and that's the thing that you have to like. That's that's the, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes people make mm-hmm. is they'll do stuff they don't like and just do it half assed Yeah. And I'm like, you can't do that. Like, no. First of all, it's just bad on a business perspective. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's just bad for you, I think, just because like 
you're gonna perform badly. That's just gonna like who that person could have known someone else that would have yeah. gave you. And a now career. they're gonna be like, yeah. he didn't look like he was. He he liked it, so we'll just try with someone else. Exactly. It's like why why the hell would they recommend you if yeah. you don't look like you're having a great time? You didn't. You were kind of snappy, or you yeah, know, the communication sure. wasn't the best. You know, you, clients can read through that yeah. easily, and, and you notice that. Like you can tell. Like that's Very why right. um, I really I really focus on my communication when I work with my clients, and they all like, I'm told every almost every time it's like wow, like it's never been so easy, so comfortable, and, and like. And that's what I just pride myself on, because that that's a huge thing that people yeah, understand, yeah. right? And if you're not passionate about something, yeah. how's your communication gonna be on point? Mm -hmm. How are you gonna seem like you're having fun when you're yeah. not having fun, For right? Sure. So it's uh, definitely hard, but and, you gotta do what you like to do. And your mood pumps them up too. Like I know we work with Sandra. Like when we were in the gym, I was like, oh, like the, I was like, oh, that shot's mint. And I know, yeah. me, like he's guilty of it too. Like oh, when we're in the yeah. field, he's like, oh, this looks so mint. Right? <laughs> we always do that. We always do that stuff. And everyone's looking at us like, you good? I'm like, yeah, you just don't understand how it feels to get that shot. Like, yeah, you know, oh, I know. And, uh, you could probably relate, oh, obviously. Yeah, for sure. But just to get that one shot, you're like, oh, that's a mint, right? Like, oh, it's such a good feeling to get it. And then even working with it and post and re-seeing it, yeah. like, on a bigger screen is awesome. And it, it also sometimes happens where it's like, the shot or the photo you think is like, oh, it's all right, it's whatever. And then you give it to them, and they're like, oh my god, that yeah. is insane. It's like... It's, again, that's a that's what we work right? for. That's what yeah. we work for is for the uh, the reaction. That's what yeah, I, that's exactly. why I like doing it. For sure. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 So you're making people happy. Yeah, that, that's what you're doing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Making people happy. That's the most important thing, right? But um, but yeah, that when you get that one shot, oh, it feels yeah. so good. But yeah, people look at you like you're a weirdo. Yeah, yeah. What the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> yeah, because we're getting like turned on because of the. <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> I did that with, uh, with another model too. I had the same thing, and she's like, "You're really excited, eh?" I'm like, "Yeah." You have no idea. Yeah. You'll see later. You'll see when it's all edited up. Oh yeah, it's a good feeling. <laughs> Actually, uh, my sister, I think, worked with your girlfriend, uh, No Frills. Really? Your, your, uh, yeah, my girlfriend Francesca. She works there. Yeah. So my, my sister, Julia, Julia Grandoni. Oh, I know Julia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so she uh, she worked. She told me because she goes, "Oh, where are you going?" I said, "I'm going to do a podcast with Pete. We're going to interview Kev." Yeah. She goes, oh, I, uh, I was like, do you know him? She goes, I think he remembers me, but she, she goes, uh, I worked with his girlfriend at Ophrils. Yeah. So, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Small world. Yeah, small Super world. Super small. Yeah. 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 Crazy. That's, a, that's incredible. Yeah. She said you were a good guy, so I trust I like you. to think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like to think so. <laughs> I was actually checking out your, uh, your tutorial on the fish line for the shoes. Yeah. You've probably seen me like it. Yeah, yeah I just like it. Like, yeah, so oh, and the Adidas shoes? The Hoka. The Hoka. Only, only the running shoes I did. Oh, the running shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put them on a fishing line and you shot them yeah. up like, with the sky. Looks sick. Like, it looks like they're floating. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, that was honestly... Who did I see do that? Um, some English dude. Like, I don't even think he's like full in content creation, yeah, yeah. but like, he just pops him. Like, oh, cool. That That's looks cool. crazy. So I, I'm like... Why not try it? And again, like you said, it's a perfect time to be trying new stuff. Yeah. And I was like, all right, for sure, because I've always been wanting to kind of get into the Photoshop game. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've always kind of like kept it on the back burner. Like, oh, like I know, I know, like the main tools in Photoshop, but like yeah, yeah. getting in there n nitty gritty, I haven't been able to do. So I'm like, Same. let me try it. So then I, I tried it for the whole fishing line thing, like getting getting ready the fishing line. It it came out awesome. I loved it, and that actually booked me another job, which is funny. Again, oh, you really? never know. Like again, this this goes back to what we were just talking about. You never know when something's gonna happen from what you've done so it's like i did that for a shoe a running shoe and then a supplement company hits me up and wow. they want some like a video with the same sort of thing but it in the sky was that was that shoe job or gig was that a paid gig was that something that was you want spec, to do spec ad yeah, see see, spec see ad. what like that can relate to uh like give you now now that just gave you another job exactly if you didn't do that you wouldn't have got that supplement job no. yeah and that's the, and that's again like I think spec ads, it, yeah. it's something that I've come to learn from maybe like, what, eight months ago? I yeah. wish I learned it sooner, but it is massive. Mm -hmm. Absolutely massive. Um, any beginner, I don't care even how experienced you are, even like guys that I know that have been in the game like six, seven years, they'll do it and they'll come out with a huge contract from someone else just yeah. because of the spec work they've done. Because like you have to show what you're capable of doing. And even if, if you've done something kind of similar, it's different when you produce something that's almost literally exactly what they need. Yeah. Because when you, when you hear- They know what they, with the, with, you know you exactly. can bring it to the table and like yeah this is what we need yeah and that's pretty much what i was trying to do because um i did a shoot with my uh my buddy robert happenstall he's actually an under armor athlete oh, cool. running, running athlete oh, nice. for a 800 meter dash and um uh where, where'd he go the junior olympics i believe he went to um seven time ncaa all-star like wow absolutely cool. insane running nice, nice. so from here uh, yeah from hamilton oh, went wow. to stm and everything oh, sick. yeah and he went to wake forest university did his four years and uh now he's sponsored by Under Armour and he's, he's heading back to 
Virginia, I believe, to um, be with District Track Club. It's a big uh, track club um, hub for um, a lot of the runners and Under Armour guys, and they kind of go work there as coaches and stuff. Oh, cool. Um, but anyways, I, I did that ad for them because like it was Under Armour, first of all. He yeah. had the sponsorship. It was like a match made in heaven. I was like, perfect. Like, you have all the gear yeah. for free. You don't have to buy it. I don't have to buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it's all set up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's something I love. Like, I love the running thing. I love the sports thing. Yeah. So let's do it up. And I did that. And Under Armour actually DM'd me afterwards. And they loved my stuff. Oh, and wow. like, oh, we're definitely going to keep you in mind for some local stuff going forward. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's, good. that's crazy. Doing something like that, again, for free. Yeah. I didn't get them to pay me. I told me, you know what? I feel like, I mean, this, this might come off stupid and wrong, but I feel like doing stuff for free for your own portfolio, portfolio is probably a better... Not a better solution, but something better for your work in the end than doing paid work. I 100% agree. You it's know good, what I mean? Return on investment. Because when you're doing paid work, you might have a different, um, you know, image in your head other than what the client wants. Exactly. And that's the biggest thing because when you're doing a paid job, it has you're, to you're, be you're, what they want. Exactly. It's not you. When you do your own work, it's what you want and you know what people like. You know where the satisfaction is going towards, and then you're gonna aim it, and you know you're gonna hit it. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing. You don't have again like the two cooks in the kitchen. It's like it's only yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. we're doing this how I want to do it. Exactly. And like you know that, and you, I, I've always let people know that. Whenever I have someone there, I'm like, I'm like, if you see something cool that you, you think is a good idea, like yeah. okay, let me know. But just know, like, hey, like this is yes my project. Something like hap something happened like that when I was shooting a music video, and it's just like. Like you don't own a camera and you don't know nothing about cameras and you're trying to tell me how to shoot this But you don't know how it's like you can't do that. They don't know the limitations. It doesn't work. Yeah, they don't know the limitations of what we're working with. Yeah, right? exactly They think like oh like you just do this shot just put your camera there and yeah. you shoot this way Even if you it. have Press a vision record. it's still it's you, you still need to be in in the you, you need to be in the game to kind of under stand and realize on how to get that shot yeah it's and easy. the lens choice like exactly. it's like it's easy to have a vision yeah i can look at it that's why they have video. dps for for every job because the dp knows what they what is meant for it exactly and that's why they have grips that's why they have everything else a specific job and all these jobs that are that come together and that's what the production basically is yeah, yeah. but yeah that that's one thing i definitely uh, grinds my gears a bit yeah. is when uh, you'll get a client like I have no problem with clients being like oh, I kind of want something like this I, I completely cool with that because like you want to provide something that they're going to enjoy yeah, yeah. but I also let them know it's like hey like you're hiring me because I have a skill that you don't yeah. yeah right and it's like and I've had clients before like hey you know what? and that's why you're there exactly that, that's the whole reason why I'm here yeah. it's because I'm going to do my job you do your job and I'm going to do my job while you're doing yours like mm -hmm. as simple as that yeah. and um a lot of, i make sure all my clients understand that because yeah. um and then w once that boundary's passed i let them know very quickly that hey like um i completely understand like you got things you're gonna like but you have to understand like this is my skill okay? yes i'm not gonna come to a trainer and be like yeah you should train like that like no no you go to them for that exactly yeah. like hey, that's not how it works you're, i'm not gonna come to freaking pete's dad's bike shop i'm like yeah no you should do that with the bike like no, no. <laughs> it's, not, it's not gonna happen. oh you had people like that here oh I, you've I, had people tell us like oh you need to do it like this or or th they want to do this job to save money but they don't have the tools and they want to borrow them but i'm like do you know like you need this f for that like there's there's more complications that can happen and just like let us do it we've been here forever yeah. and it's like if money's a problem 100 percent then you might just have to wait out and save your money and you know it's worth in the end for us to do it then for you to do it and then plus you're gonna be wasting gas going back and forth yeah yeah we've had that so many times oh i think i think everybody's had yeah, had it. Oh, yeah it doesn't matter what sure. trade or where you're in like you're gonna have people that think they know it better than you and that's when like i just don't even bother with those kind yeah. of people like if, if someone walks through the, the doors and i was working i'd be like oh uh, okay yeah. just just walk around and if it doesn't work, work, then you can be like, well, that's what they wanted, and this is what you get. Yeah, that's, not, oh, that's, I've, I've done that before. It's, it's definitely been like that where I've had clients, this is more earlier in, in my career, which is two years long, but um, they would be like, oh, I want it like this, exactly like this, shots like this, like everything they had. I'm like, okay. And then I did that. And I, well, it doesn't look that good. Yeah, well, this like, is what you wanted. This is what you wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else I, you want? I told you this probably wasn't going to come out because you know these shots don't really flow to you yes. you don't really understand flow no. but you can see something like that looks cool yeah, yeah. i can look at anything that coat hanger looks cool 
This light, <laughs> yeah, looks, this light looks freaking awesome. Yeah. But like, I, yeah. I can't tell you. Like, you can, you can't tell me how to film that or the flow of that or how you're going to be able to get that. So you, some people just don't get it. But, no. Um, you're hiring a professional. Leave it, leave it to them. Exactly. Like, and I always tell that, especially if there's someone who, it's, when it's business to business, I tell them like, you're a trainer or yeah. you know, like you're a, you're a, you're like a sports. Uh, therapist whatever it's like i don't come and tell you how to do your job you don't come tell no. me how to do my no. job like kind of rude to be honest oh it is and it's 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 just respect right especially yeah. when you're coming from a business to business standpoint it, it's not even like a client thing mm -hmm. it's like you're paying me to do this it's like again let me do my job yeah. simple as that. I, it's something that's so simple i, I don't understand uh, like, some <laughs> people say control right it's like it, control it is yeah, yeah. it's yeah. really like a lack of lack of control self-control for it and then going back to the even going back to the free work like i think that really oh, gives yeah. us a good time to showcase mm -hmm. our directing skills because like people just see us as filmmakers but they don't know what goes into it yeah like if we have a personal project obviously we're directing it but like going back to the free work like for your buddy for the under armor then you get to guide that that whole thing and they're like this guy's a di good director too this exactly do you, do you use a lot of shot lists like for all your videos or do you more so like just see what you're working with in the environment and do it like that's how me that's what me and him more up we never do about. a shot list no, we, really? we don't really. I do. never. All my work is no shot list. That's that's incredible to see some of your work being like so. Man, I just the thing is though, like I have shot lists. I go, I watch several YouTube videos that I just try to remember, and um, I don't really want to say mimic, but just try to get the same atmosphere, of and course. and um, I just try to use that towards a shot that I try to go to. Yeah, well, that's like a whole creativity standpoint, yeah. right? It's like I look at other things, like. I love how they portrayed this, and I, I do the same thing. Like if I'm shooting like the Under Armour thing, I was looking at other Ar Under Armour content. Yeah. I was looking at Asics content. I was looking at some Nike some Adidas. other yeah Nike yeah, again yeah. Nike Adidas. Like I was looking at everything, yeah. and then I'm not copying anything. I'm just you know getting, the feel. getting a feel for that and trying to capture the same sort of atmosphere. Right? Yeah. Um, the shots are never going to be the same. No. I don't care what anybody says. You can try and recreate things. Like it's because that's what people think is like oh you're just a copycat you're just a copy it's like you're not no. like no. i want it like even us like if we were to try and really copy something verbatim from a movie yeah it'll never come out no. it's impossible it's and possible. that's what people don't get it's so hard to copy things something something verbatim and like we're not even coming close to it it's like we just see an idea it's like i love that idea and i'm also taking this idea plus this idea plus this idea plus this idea yeah. and putting it into one and no one's done that before no and that's why it comes out so good but again yeah that the free work it's like yeah, the whole directing thing, and that's what even my buddy said. Yeah. Literally, while we're shooting, he's like, he's like, I, he's like, I don't even know what I'm, I'm doing right now, but like, I know it's gonna come out good. Like, yeah, that's hundred percent. That's how I do it. Yeah, and it's just, I'd rather have like the flow. Yes. You know, because like if you have a shot list and then something can come in and screw it up, then it screws up the whole thing. Yeah. I'd rather go in there free, free minded, and and just you know. It's all about like the. It's all about like how the atmosphere, of the video you want to be like. If if it's a pump up video, you you know you need to have a lot of moving in, sweeping in shots, handheld shots, emotional facial. Yeah, shots. detailed stuff. It it all depends on the vibe of the video you want first. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's that's when it's like, um, I I typically do a shot list, but it's never something I'm like stuck sticking to like religiously. Yeah. yeah. It's always like these are like, again like like you said you have these these videos in your head and you me memorize them i have a terrible memory and i can't remember anything so do you, I, do you use youtube a lot for i use youtube i use instagram a lot for sure um but uh what i'll do is i'll actually screenshot certain frames that i like oh, okay yeah, yeah. i'll put them into a mood board and something easy to slide through on my phone and like oh i kind of like that let's make it work with what's here yeah you know what i mean so i kind of get the idea and then while i'm there i'm like okay like okay this will work over there or this will work over there and if something does come up again i always keep in my head it's never going to go to plan yeah. it's never going to go to plan it's never going to be it's perfect. hard to, it's hard to break that like, it is yeah like i remember we were, so we, we did that one short film with oh the hot, man? the hot man yeah and we started a shot list but like we sort of planned this like two weeks before halloween and our thing was let's get out before halloween so we started writing a shot list so we got to do another one this year yes yeah, so we're gonna do another actually we should do another one too which we'll talk about after yeah <laughs> um so we were doing that and then we got to the point where like we can't focus on the shot list we just gotta get it out so we sort of went by the shot list and then we had to uh, make obviously some changes because we were limited on time and space like we were gonna do it at a certain spot but we, we ended up doing it a portion of it here and switching a whole bunch of stuff. It turned like, out pretty good. It turned out good for what for the amount of time we did it in, yeah, hundred percent. And like no production value. No. Well, I mean, like with the cameras and stuff, but like. I think we gotta make an redo it, but do an extended version of it. Yeah. Like yeah. A longer one. It no, was, that was definitely cool. I love that one. What was the other one? It was was it airdrop or something? Oh, the one. Yes. Oh yeah, that's on in your my channel. house. On your channel, I think. That yeah. was 
so good. My girlfriend like talks about one? that to this day. Yeah. My girlfriend what? loves really? that one. Yeah. My girlfriend loves that one. She actually, that's funny, she brought it up yesterday. Really? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And yeah, we did that one. Uh, I think that was for a contest, I think. Yes, it was for a contest. Yeah. It was for Jacob Bowens? Uh, like I think? Or was it? It was, it a was for a contest. I know it was definitely it, for a contest. It was, it was for Film Ride, I think. Yes, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Cool Which is another good YouTube um, page, I would suggest. Film Ride. Film Ride. They do a lot of short films. They show you how to do stuff, like tutorials. Um, a lot of, like, film industry stuff. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that one was that one was on the go type of thing. Yeah, that was. We did. We actually. We, both, we came up with that story at his house, like as we were doing yeah. it. Yeah. He'd be awesome. like, "Let's do this," and I'd be like, "Have an idea, like let's." I was shot on the Ursa. Yes, I remember. It was. Yeah. That's why I was so obsessed with yeah. that. Like I remember you, yeah. you you shot the your first wedding with it. I was like, "Holy!" Yes, yes. So I actually purchased the GH5S. Okay. And then we were shooting midway for that airdrop video, and then I ended up going to Eastgate to sell the GH5S, which I I actually made like eight hundred bucks more. <laughs> Off the camera, yeah, yeah because I got a crazy deal on it. First of all, oh, okay, we sold the camera and then we went to and then we went right back after, as soon as right after. Yeah, yeah. so I sold the GH5S, <laughs> went back to my house and we finished it, yeah. and then we shot it on the, all on the Ursa Mini, which yeah. was on an awesome camera. I gotta watch that again. I totally forgot about that film. Yeah, Holy that was awesome. That's that was one thing that actually got me interested in the whole short film game. Really? Yeah, yeah. I actually loved that thing oh, because wow. I don't know, like. That whole like I don't know, just the whole telling the story thing. It's something you know a little outside the box, right? Like yeah. again, like I'm in a whole sports game, so like I like do like doing things outside of that realm a little bit. Just to yeah. test yourself. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. it is. You, you I, I gotta like test myself a bit, right? Because you you get into a game, you get a little bit comfortable. Yeah. You know, you gotta test yourself, get out of there a little bit, do some horror yeah, man, stuff we, or something. Yeah, it's yeah. So cool. We gotta, horror. we gotta start shooting again, like short films. I know, like, actually, I was thinking, last, I was on a bike ride last night, and I was thinking, like, we're going to do a short film, and just, like, film the whole process as YouTube videos for this channel. Yeah. Because then you have content for the for the channel, you see the, all the behind the scenes, so you can even do all the behind yeah. the scenes first, and then see it all come together after, yeah. right? So we do an episode every week of, like, writing what we wrote and the thinking process, showing all that. Yeah. Yeah, that'd like, be cool super idea. cool. Well, I think we, we started doing that with the, uh, like, I started doing a behind the scenes, which I think you still have the footage for that. For what? The, the Hat Man, but we never posted it. I got the footage. I think so. Yeah. Do I? Remember, that's when I. That's when my laptop started, stopped working. So I had to oh. give it to you. Remember? But we never posted it. But like going like forward, I think we should do that. Let's do yeah. it. Because right now the right now the hard like on, what, what's the hardest part for you to post co consistent content? Like, would you say like it's just like you're working on a project and then sometimes it doesn't relate to your brand, so you can't really post it. You just throw it in your story so people know that you do that, but you just. Yeah, I think the hardest thing, because I was, that was, that's actually funny, because um, I think it was about like a month and a half ago, I was really yeah. starting to focus in on the personal branding stuff and like yeah. posting consistently. Um, <clears throat> but it was honestly, for me now, the reason why I kind of fell off a little bit was it's just time. Like it's, it, it's hard to prioritize the personal branding when what you're doing, when you're doing all this stuff that is your main thing. Because it's like, if I don't do this stuff and I just do my personal branding, this thing's making the money and this thing yeah. isn't, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's really one of those things where it's like, um, I really need to focus on this right now. I don't really have time to focus on that, but it definitely needs to become more of a priority. I think it's just literally, you gotta, you gotta prioritize it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, it is a huge part, especially like things like that, that is huge right now. Like I started doing those behind the scenes videos and yeah, like, yeah. people were like going nuts about it. Yeah. Like, even that company that I the got shoes? the job from, the shoes yeah, yeah. and then like the Under Armour thing, um, the all the behind the scenes stuff, the the company that hit me up actually wanted me to produce a BTS with it. Oh wow. And they also paid for that. Because awesome. they just like the behind the scenes of it. They just like the creativity wise of it, and they just if, want to if post they that show too. like a certain product in the behind the scenes, I feel like the company sees that you're putting even that little bit more effort into showing how you made it, especially with the product. Yeah. And uh, like they 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 like that. Yeah, they do. And it's funny that you're saying that because I saw this guy on YouTube, and have you ever heard of the brand Vaxis? No. They make like um, wireless HD um, transmitters. Oh wow. Okay. You know, you know, like wireless. You know, like if you want to transmit an image from the from this camera wirelessly to another monitor, another monitor over yeah. there. So, anyways, I saw this guy create a YouTube video, and I googled the company. Um, this guy made a video about it, and those good reviews, and he said good stuff about it. Googled the company, and you know, I said, "What's there to lose? I'm sitting at home. They're somewhere on this earth that I have no idea." So I got their email, their contact stuff. I sent them an email saying hey would you guys have to collab you know like i can send you 
content if you send me a free product and like you know i can create it behind the scenes and then i sent them a link that i did for the basketball video that's on yes. youtube um of me shooting and all that stuff and um they're like oh my god yeah we would love to do this so wow. they're gonna send me an hd um i think it's the 500 i forget what the actual model is um an hd wireless transmitter um trading for content and behind the scenes content as well so you get that for free get it for free oh nice that's good. so but i i made a contract for them too yeah. to make it seem like you know like i'm not just this person who's stealing your your product <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so i literally I, I legit made a contact uh, contract stating like listen you're gonna get like so they put out they, they stated in the email saying that they wanted a 10 minute video on youtube yeah talking about it and i'm like yeah that's fine that's that's no problem like i can show behind the scenes stuff that's what they want they want product photos instagram content i'm like man like 100 and um so i sent them the contract and then they ended up finding me on facebook they added me as a friend um and then, then another person from the company added me yesterday actually and they're like yeah contract looks good we'll we're doing this so i was like oh that's sick that's awesome because like you know like i, I I didn't expect anything because sometimes you think companies are so big and they get all, a lot of the same emails and yes. they just like brush you off. It's like nothing. But I feel like the more and more you create content that people like, it's it's like you don't know what it, what it can score you. Exactly. And getting free product for just a YouTube video that you love to make, it's like crap. Like I can get free stuff doing stuff I love to do. Exactly. So now you just got to show off this product, which I feel like we can use in a whole bunch of shorts. Yeah. Videos that we can use because now the only thing you need to buy is like a wireless focus pole, and then you have like a little mini production set right there. Yeah, that's it. Um, so like, yeah, I just feel like don't be scared to reach out to companies. No. Oh, you that that's, I mean? that's definitely huge. Because you're behind the computer. These these companies are whoever knows where. Yeah. It's just a simple email. It's either they want to do it or they don't. It, yeah. it might it might you know bring you down a little bit because you feel like your work's not good enough but who cares it's not like you can always go out and buy it but it's always better to get free stuff yeah, oh, might, yeah. as well <laughs> might as well do a trade and you get to yeah another thing to add to your portfolio yeah, yeah exactly yeah, and like, then who knows what other friends this company has that are going to see it exactly and that's yeah. the biggest thing right like you do a behind the scenes for this company and then who knows maybe another company that's maybe not the same product or the same product or Gotta another start somewhere. product exactly yeah another product wants to say okay and then now you've created a, a need for that yeah and now it's like okay well that's gonna be a few hundred bucks yes or even a hundred bucks to start off like coming from nothing do you watch potato jet no no do you know who he is uh, i've or heard of gene him. grata Gina 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 or whatever Gina 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 Sounds familiar. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a he's, he's like um he's a great YouTuber and he gets a lot of free stuff I think I'm pretty sure he gets free stuff people send him stuff and he talks about it on his channel yeah but he's not just like a normal YouTuber I don't I don't know if I would really even call him a YouTuber he's a filmmaker that makes videos as well and he talks about products and he talks about products that are being sent to him to talk about um. He, he's almost like a Peter McKinnon, but in the cinematography standpoint, okay. he doesn't do like tutorials for, I don't want to say beginners, but he does like higher end stuff and he gets in great, great into like the tech about a certain product. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would look him up. He's a, he's a, and, and, and his, um, what do you call it? Uh, um, his personality is awesome. Yeah. And I feel like that's why he stands out. Yeah. Um, he's more raw. Like he, yes. he just, it's not, it, it doesn't look like, it looks professional, but it doesn't look professional. Like he'll he, it looks like it, he's not trying. Yeah, it looks like he's not trying. Like he'll just, he'll do go into a vlog and he'll start reviewing. Like he'll just review like the product. He's not worried about yeah. everything being too pretty. Yeah, he's so yeah, like yeah. on the go and raw, he just I, does it. I think that's huge, especially when yeah. you're doing behind the scenes because they're, you're not, these companies are getting you to do that. Yeah. You're not, they're not only doing it for your video skills, a lot of it is for the uh, personality behind yeah. who you are yeah. and that's why um, I think people really like my behind the scenes because again like I don't care about being too professional because like yeah. this is who I am yeah. you know like I'm like a funny guy uh, I'm just naturally whatever goofy guy like, I don't mind screwing around a little bit so it's like showing them like hey I'm not some like prim and proper person here yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's, like, yeah, he actually like, inspired me to make this backdrop really yeah I love this I was watching so his YouTube videos and he had like that nice yellow orange backdrop and I'm like and I couldn't find that color anywhere. And then I was just like, you know what? I'm going to just make this. And it's totally different style. It's wood. But it looks good. yeah. I love it. But I mean, I just, yeah, just 
Yeah. I don't know. He's a cool guy. He's yeah. like something that I, he's another person that I highly would suggest on YouTube to watch. I just wanted to thank Kevin for coming on the podcast and, you know, kind of scheduling his whole day for tonight. And, uh, yeah, so thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, if you guys want to check him out, uh, his stuff will be in the description below. His Instagram link will be there. And, uh, yeah, we will see you guys on the next episode. Thank you guys for having me out. 